All right, so today's video is just a quick one about the efficiencies with trailers. I'm towing this massive car trailer. I don't have exact weights, but I'm guessing the trailer alone would have to be around 800 kilo. It's a solid, solid trailer. On top of that, I've got all of these boards. Each board would weigh about 30, 40, 50 kilo. And then obviously I've got the fence panels. I don't know if you can see them. There's about six of the fence panel weights down the bottom as well, which are pinned underneath. So I've got a fair bit of weight behind this. And on top of that, this is a lot wider than the car. So the wind resistance as well. So today I'm going to be going up an elevation of about 500 meters. And I'll also be going a distance of about 40 kilometers. My guess is with the car alone, with that elevation, I'd use about 60 kilometers worth or 50% more. But uh, with this trailer, I wouldn't be surprised if we're something between double and, tri and triple. So instead of using 40 kilometers worth, we might use like 120 kilometers worth. So we'll also have a look at the consumption graph when we get there, and that will show us our watt hours per kilometer. All right, let's go. Okay, so this is on the way up Shepherd's Hill Road. It's a very steep road, and you can see we're just maxing out. The interesting thing is I, I'm not at all pushing the car. The car feels like it's running on you know, probably 20% of its power. But in regards to the load on the battery, you can see it's really pushing here. So going on from there, the next uphill run, you can see it here quite clearly. We're still going uphill. It's not nearly as bad as that Shepherd's Hill Road run. Then we've got the last run here. You can see it's slowly tapering down. This is 500 meters of incline. This is a stretch for any car towing this. It's not like you'd put this behind a, a turbo diesel ute and not know this trailer was there. It, you'd still feel this weight. So it's not to be shunned or ignored. This, this is a considerable pull. So what's interesting here is going from there onto the freeway. Have a look, it instantly goes down to, to like almost nothing. It literally hits regen on the freeway down a couple of the hills. So this is the second time that I've found this, that the car is happier to be going along at 110 on the freeway with a windsock behind it than it is to pull the weight up the hill. Now it does both quite easily, mind you. It does it like it's it's nearly nothing. The only time you notice it is on your range. The only time you notice it is on the battery capacity. So there you go, we did a 45 kilometer drive. This consumption is showing the last 50 kilometers. So it's almost all of this drive and we're at 338 kilowatts per kilometer. Now I've only got the standard range and on top of that, I leave Sentry on another thing. So my range is only around 440 kilometers per charge. Now, just as a bonus here for anyone that's curious, I actually have to get this car trailer up that hill there. And I know a heap of you would cry at the thought of your car off-road, let alone having to tow a trailer at the same time. In truth, I don't actually know if I get there. I suspect it's dry enough, but I'm just gonna hit it with a bit of speed. We'll see how we go. So one thing I've noticed with this car is that it's got such a sensitive uh, stability control or, um, or a traction control that even the slightest bit of grass can spin your wheel. And because it's so sensitive, it just turns the power off nearly instantly. And then when you turn that power off, uh, you just can't go forward. Oh, I'm getting all this shit in the car. So then when it turns the power off, you just can't go forward where in a normal car you could spin the wheels and, and get traction by just pushing against the mud you know even though your wheels would be spinning you could just you can normally just get enough to push forward uh, where in this car if you can literally get stuck on flat ground if it's wet grass it sounds crazy but it's absolutely true that being said i just thought of the fact they have the slip start for the snow so next time i get caught in the grass i'll test that theory i'm going to put it in the snow or slip or whatever it is and see if it will push forward and push out Interesting. I'll be doing another video soon about towing my boat about 60 kilometers and having a look at the range then because obviously the boat is a bit more of a windsock and I suspect will weigh a couple hundred kilo more than the load I've got today. All right, guys, I hope this helps you for any of you thinking about getting a trailer and whether it will get you to wherever you need to be. All right, see you in the next one.